roll out your 401k to a totally tax-free retirement bucket. In this episode, I'm going to address the question, how to invest my 401k after retirement, because that's the way most people ask the question. Well, I'm going to shock you with my answer. It's not what you think. I'm going to tell you to get it out. Do not take RMDs. That's the worst advice I've ever heard. And you're going to learn why. So I'm Doug Andrew. I'm a financial strategist. I've been doing this for more than 46 years. I'm a retirement planning specialist. I've never owned an IRA or 401k. I never will. I've never owned a Roth. I never will. And so when people ask me the question, how to invest uh, my 401k uh, after retirement? Well, they're shocked when I say, first of all, I would not leave it in the 401k. What? Well, I don't need the money yet. I don't want to pay tax. My accountant tells me, who's telling you to pull it out and pay tax? You want to keep deferring it until you have to start taking out the minimum. And then they advise you to take the required minimum distribution. If you don't need the money, those are called RMDs, required minimum distribution. Now that's the worst advice I've ever heard. And people say, really? Well, why do they tell you to do that on CNBC? And I go, listen here, who's funding CNBC? Government revenueers. Why would they tell you to uh, stop a partnership, to kill a partnership where the government gets a third or maybe 50% or more of everything you will ever, ever earn if they can convince you to leave your money in that IRA or 401k account? And so when people say, how should I invest my money in my 401k? Usually they're saying, well, I have a 401k and it has money in it. Uh, where should I invest the money that's inside my 401k? And so I usually say, well, first of all, during retirement, I would get it out of the market. Do not have your money in the market because most people that would come to me maybe five years before retirement, because I always help people look at at retirement planning, which is different than for retirement planning. They would come to me and they would be way too top heavy into traditional IRAs of 401ks yet to be taxed in the market. And I would go, what are you thinking? Uh, you should not have your money in the volatile market because there's not an asset manager around that can legally show you a predictable income stream out of that much more than about 4% because the average return, according to Dalbar, they have analyzed investor behavior for years is only about three and a half percent. And so they'll only show you maybe a 4% payout because they don't want to be sued for you outliving your money. Wall Street was built for you to put money in it, not take it out. Okay. If you ask any a broker or an investment advisor, when is the best time to get my money out of the market? They will say never. They want you to buy and hold forever. It was never designed to give you income on the back end with predictable cash flow. So they can't do it. You need to reposition the money and get it out of the market and protect yourself from that market volatility and create predictable cash flow, predictable payouts, more like eight, nine, 10% that every million dollars doesn't generate 40,000 of income. It generates 80,000, twice as much, 100,000, and it's tax-free. Whereas 40,000 a year coming out of tax-deferred IRA or 401k, you have to pay the tax. In just a 25% bracket, you're not netting 40, you're netting 30. They charge you 1% on the million for asset management fees. If you deduct that from the 40, that, now you're down to 20,000. What I'm about to share with you isn't a little bit better. It's four times better. For years, I've helped people get 80,000, 8% payouts, 10% payouts versus a net of 2% out of money in traditional IRAs or 401ks in the market. So my first piece of advice, get the money out of the market and then begin a strategic rollout, not a rollover. A rollover is going from the frying pan to the fire, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that's where people roll their money 
over from a 401k into an IRA and continue to delay the inevitable, uh, postpone, procrastinate, paying tax until they have to start pulling it out at age 72 now. See, if you don't start withdrawing money based upon your LE, what's LE? That's life expectancy. Starting at age 72, the government will penalize you 50% on top of the tax. Let's say your life expectancy is 20 years at age 72. So if you have a million dollar nest egg, you have to take out 120th or else you'll have to pay a 50% penalty on that. What's 120th of, of a million? It's 50 grand. If you don't pull out 50 grand and pay the tax on it, they will penalize you 25,000 and make you pay the tax. See, they want the money out and tax before you die so they can tax you again when you uh, do die or, or at least tax your estate. I would not recommend you string out, you stretch out and delay the inevitable and take RMDs. That's the worst advice. You're not saving tax. I'll explain why here. So as a tax strategist for years, I've told people, hey, uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Your accountant is saying, hey, do you want to save tax this year by not accessing money out of that IRA or 401k or taking out the required minimum? No, they're only looking at that given tax year. So I designed some software and uh, as far as I know, it's the only software on the planet still that shows people the darkness of the night, so to speak, if they took the minimum amount out and stretched it out during their lifetime, defer, 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 procrastinate and through your spouse's lifetime, and then your kids, now the kids have to get the money out and taxed within 10 years. They cannot use it for their retirement unless they're already retired. And so it's the best savings bond the government ever came up with for themselves. But when you stretch it out, people are flabbergasted when I add up all the tax and they go, wait a minute. You mean at age 65, I had a million bucks in there. And if I leave it there, I'll likely pay out at least a million in taxes by continuing to let it grow tax deferred. Yup. Sometimes you'll pay even way more than that. They go, well, what's the solution? I said, get it out, get the taxes over and done with sooner than later. And your current tax bracket is likely the lowest tax bracket you will ever, ever be in. Hello. I mean, when I ask most people, do you think future taxes are going to be lower? I get nothing but crickets. Do you think taxes are going to be the same? Very few people. How many think they're going to be higher? Why? Well, because, hello, look at the government spending, bailouts, economic stimulus, free college tuition is what they're advocating, and Medicare for all. A congressional budget office says that taxes will likely go to 50, 60, or 70% to fund these kinds of things. It's going to cost $100 trillion to do some of those initiatives. The government only brings in about four and a half trillion a year in revenue and a hundred trillion in the next 10 years, that's 10 trillion a year. In other words, just those initiatives will require twice as much as the IRS collects. And that doesn't even cover the normal uh, federal budget. So can you see the writing on the wall? So I would recommend a strategic rollout, get the money out, the taxes over and done with because your current tax bracket is likely the lowest bracket you will ever, ever be in. Because this country has seen twice tax rates go federally as high as 94%. I'm afraid we may go that direction again. You'll be kicking yourself if you don't get the taxes over and done with. But let me share with you what you do with the net after tax money. You don't put it back into a tax deferred account. You put it into something that's going to be tax free from now on and provide tax-free income that will earn eight to 10% rates of return predictably. You will never outlive your money based upon that. You link your returns to the things that inflate. If inflation goes to 10%, you'll probably earn 15%. Inflation will help you instead of hinder you. And at the end of the day, anything you leave behind to your spouse or your kids will blossom, transfer tax-free, and they don't have to take it out unless they want to, and it's tax-free whenever they do. That is what I want for you, and I'm gonna share with you how you can learn about a far better alternative than keeping your 401k and wondering, where should I invest the money that's in my 401k? First of all, get it out of the 401k, and then I'll show you where to put it that'll be far better. So I coined this term strategic rollout. It's not a rollover, it's a rollout. There's actually three parts to the process. You don't have to do all three, but number one, 
you strategically plan how you're going to get the money rolled out of that 401k or IRA over a certain time period so you don't incur a whole bunch of unnecessary tax. Generally speaking, I usually have a minimum of five years because where I'm going to put the money after I pay the tax is in my favorite vehicle I call the laser fund. And under the tax citations, under the Technical and Miscellaneous Revenue Act, I have to spread out the funding of a laser fund over a minimum of five years to grandfather myself to have tax-free income for as long as I live. So generally, let's say if I had a half a million bucks in IRAs and 401ks, I may only take out a hundred grand a year for five years and pay the tax on that. See, that's strategic for a reason. Now, there's other years where maybe you were unemployed, you were sick, or during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, they actually let you access up to $100,000 out of an IRA or 401k before the age of 59 and a half uh, without a 10% penalty, and they let you pay the tax over three tax years. That's when I told many, many people, hey, that's a, an opportunity to get the taxes over and done with. Now, you don't need the money, that's not what the question is. Oh, well, I don't need the money. Well, so you get it out during a strategic time period and get the taxes over and done with sooner than later. And then you reposition the net after tax monies into something that's going to be tax free from now on. And it will ultimately blossom when you die. Now, my favorite vehicle is a max funded indexed universal life insurance contract where I've averaged 10.07% net rates of return for the last 25 years tax-free. Many people don't understand how to structure one of these, but uh, I call it the LASER fund because LASER is an acronym that stands for Liquid Asset Safely Earning Returns. My money's liquid, it's safe, I do not lose due to market volatility, and it's totally tax-free, and when I ultimately die, it blossoms in value, so I'll explain what that is. In a laser fund, you're taking the after-tax money, rolling it out and put it into a laser fund in accordance with IRS guidelines so that the money that goes into your laser fund will accumulate money tax-free the rest of your life and allow you to generate tax-free income. It's way better than a Roth, okay? Roths do that, but the laser fund allows me to put in large lump sums. You can't do that with a, a Roth. You can make up for past years. I can access money anytime, even before the age of 59 and a half without a 10% penalty. I don't have to start taking money out at age 72 like I have to with a traditional IRA or 401k. There's none of those strings attached. But when I ultimately die, whatever is left in there will blossom. I'm 68 years old. If I died tomorrow in an accident, every million I would have in my laser fund would blossom to two and a half million instantly and transfer income tax-free to my spouse. There's not an IRA or 401k or a Roth around that will do that. And people say, how much does that cost? Nothing. Now, nothing's free, but I'm not paying for that benefit. It's being paid for with a minuscule portion of interest that you're going to pay an unnecessary tax if you leave your money in that stupid 401k once you understand all the strings attached with that thing i think it's one of the stupidest places to put money and so other than that i don't have any strong feelings on that subject so how can you learn about this well i want to share with you one or two quick stories and then show you how you can get a free copy of this book it's 300 pages i'll pay for the book you pay the shipping and handling so in this book, uh, there's about 200 pages of charts, graphs, and explanations in 14 chapters if you're a left brain learner. Uh, if you flip the book over, this is about 100 pages, 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories. There's one chapter devoted to strategic rollouts. You're going to learn stories in here about one couple, school teachers. I saved them a quarter of a million dollars of unnecessary tax, rolling the money out of their 403Bs and their 401Ks. They were so grateful, I doubled their net spendable retirement income. There's another story of a gentleman whose wife had just passed away. He was 70 and a half, and his advisor told him to take out RMDs. I said, what are you thinking? We got his money out in five years, and I want you to read this story. We saved him $750,000 of unnecessary tax, and we were able to quadruple his net spendable retirement income. He was so grateful. 
There's another couple explained in here. They were uh, both physicians, husband and wife. We saved them $1.2 million of unnecessary tax that they would have paid had they left their money in their 401ks. And so I want you to learn. Here's how you can claim your free copy of this book. It's my 11th book. They're flying off of our warehouse shelves. Go to Laser fund.com l-a-s-e-r fund.com you pay 595 shipping and handling i'll pay for the book there's also options there to get the uh, audio version or uh, get video education i want to empower you so be sure and claim your free copy of this book